We have seen a lot of weird and wonderful engines that have come out of the wonderful minds of creators. We've seen engines that have double boilers front and back, We've seen engines that's been inspired by firefighting equipment, and even engines that aren't really engines, they were originally powered by horses. But out of all the weird and wonderful engines out there, I have to admit, the Shining Zeppelin takes the cake. When you look at this weird engine, it has the streamlining of the Mallard, the body of the Zeppelin, and is powered by a propeller. This was the brainchild of German aircraft engineer Frank Krukenberg. Before the First World War, he designed aircraft and airships. Over time, France changed its view in airships in particular. They were expensive to look after and maintain, and the gas used to keep the engines afloat, hydrogen, was highly flammable. There had been a recent spate of airship disasters, notably French vessel Dixmude, which had exploded in mid-air following a lightning strike with the loss of everyone on board in 1923, and British airship R101, which nosedived to the ground before catching fire, killing 48 people and effectively ending the civilian airship program in the UK. But it did draw inspiration from the airship's streamlined shape and design. After the First World War, he opened up an engineering consultancy in Hamburg and returned his attention from the air to the rails, creating monorails, and he wanted his railway to be the fastest in the world. While other countries were still using steam, France decided to use a different type of propulsion for his high-speed trains, and drawing on his aeronautical knowledge, he created the Schneinen Zeppelin. The railcar was built in the beginning of 1930 at the Hanover, Leinhausen and Works in the German Imperial Railway Company and took nearly a year to complete with just one power car. It was originally given two BMW V6 petrol aircraft engines and this was later replaced with a V12 giving power to its rudden propellers. The body was clad in aluminium and streamlined to resemble zeppelins that once graced the sky. The interior was lavishly designed and the car itself could carry up to 40 passengers. In 1931 the rail zeppelin was ready to start its first trials and Franz did not hold back. He wanted to test the limits of this engine and see what this incredible machine could do. So on the 10th of May he ordered his driver to open up the throttle and it ex exceeded expectations with a speed of 120 miles an hour. Following successful trials, it was exhibited to the public throughout Germany, and on the 21st of June 1931, it set a new railway speed record of 143 miles an hour between Skardstadt and Dürgenin. This impressive record was held for over 20 years, and while other diesels have beaten this record, the rail Zeppelin still remains the fastest powered petrol rail engine to this day. It wasn't all plain sailing for the rail Zeppelin. The engine did have drawbacks from its tried and tested and trusted steam and diesel counterparts. For starters, unlike many railway engines, it was impossible for the rail Zeppelin to pull any carriages and freight due to the propeller and the fact it didn't have any buffers, the front. This proved to be a big problem as it meant that only 40 people at a time could be transported where a normal standard train with its carriages could take three to four times that in a single journey. It also meant that if the engine was to break down, recovery would have to be somewhat unique and most likely would have relied on having to sit on a flatbed rather than being pulled which could have been costly and time consuming. There were also concerns about the propeller itself. The propeller was unprotected and due to its diameter, it was theorized that people could be blown quite literally off the station platforms or mangled. They got hit by the propeller as it pulled out of the station. While the carriage was considered luxurious by some, due to the way the carriage was designed, it was also considered rather uncomfortable and a cramped journey. The engine's unique propulsion was also an issue. While the engine was good on the flat, the propeller was found to be woefully inadequate to tackle gradients, and because of the propeller's design, the engine could not reverse, so it had to heavily rely on turntables. 
Krukenberg was undeterred and modified the engine in 1932. He gave the front of the engine a complete overhaul and a twin axle bogey with a new hydraulic fluid drive transmission and the replacement of the propeller for a fairing. The aircraft engine was still used, but it now powered the front bogey rather than the more dangerous propeller. The prototype caused a lot of hype, however it caused some division with the German National Railway and it caused it to split from France. It did take some inspiration from the prototype and they created a new type of engine. It took advantages of the rail Zeppelin and coupled it with another streamlined engine called Bullet. The resulting engine was the DRG Class SVT877, or known locally as the Flying Hamburger. France really wanted to make an impression on the railway and make his engine work and rebuilt the engine a third time in 1934, but it was not to be. Having no other option, Franz eventually sold his prototype to the German Imperial Railway. Five years later, the rail Zeppelin was finally dismantled due to the increase in demand for materials because of the war effort. Although nothing really remains of rail Zeppelin today, it still remains a fascinating story. And even though his prototype did not work out, France's influence in the railways are still being seen and used in locomotives today. And while we may never see another Zeppelin again, be it up in the air or on the tracks, it's still a very interesting engine where rail and air, quite literally, came together.